All right, hello, and welcome back to my 2.5D RPG in Unity tutorial. Today, we're going to be working on some item functionality. So, say you eat food and then you regain health or it restores some of your stats, stuff like that. So, I'll just quickly show you. Quickly show you. So, it's I. Uh, you'll see we have a water item, an antidote item, uh, an assault rifle, ammo, and bread. So first off, I'll just press tab and you'll see the effects. We've got the effects of poisoned and bleeding, but if I take the use the antidote item, uh, you'll see no longer have the effects, so we're not losing any more health. And if I press, uh, you'll see that the health is 56 now. If I eat the bread and drink the water, uh, we'll see that our health has increased to 71. And finally, if I press I and use the assault rifle, we'll see that... Uh, I now have the assault rifle equipped. And if I just sort of shoot, you're gonna be able to see it because I've not properly implemented weapons, but you see there that after firing like a certain amount of bullets, so for this in this case 30, it will uh, the weapons will now search through the inventory for the respective ammo type. And if it has one, it will load the ammo into the weapon. Otherwise, if it can't find anything, it'll just stop shooting. So yeah, let's go see how all this was done. Okay, so first up, we have a couple of changes to the base item class that I've done. Uh, first up is we have a it's just a public string for the description text, so you can set it in the inspector. Uh, it's literally just a text describing the object and what it does and stuff. It's used for displaying it in the GUI. Next up, we have a boolean called hide item. Uh, what hide item does is it basically stops the item being picked up by the item monitor. So as you'll see here on the refresh item list where it checks for all the items in the world to see if there are any new ones have been added or any ones have gone missing on stomach. So you'll see that it has to make sure that hide item is false. Uh, this was basically because when the player would equip a weapon, the item, the weapon item that was currently equipped would get uh, picked up. And so you'd be able to duplicate items and that wasn't good. So we didn't want that. So I added this in and it works fine. Uh, next up, we've got some changes to create item in world. So, because of how weapons work now as items, and when I was dropping them originally without making the change, it would like keep the weapon attached to the player. So what I've done is I've set the transform dot parent to null. Uh, this won't matter for most items because they're not attached to the player. But for weapons, uh, this will basically make sure that once the player drops them, uh, they will just stay where the player was when they dropped them and they won't follow the player around anymore. And we've also set hide item to false because once a weapon is equipped, hide item is set to true. So just in case you drop it, hide item is set to false. And we add the item to the list from the in the item monitor. Uh, what else? Uh, next up, we've got a couple of new virtual methods. So first one is public virtual bool does item have a use function? Uh, it basically just returns true or false based on the item type. Uh, well, you said it basically. So in item food, we have uh, return true because we want to be able to use it. This basically just specifies whether the item has a, some kind of use functionality. So ammo items don't. As you'll see here, it returns false. Well, it doesn't return anything. It just uses the default, which returns false. And that is just so we know whether to draw a use item button in the uh, inventory GUI. Next up is virtual void use item. Uh, this is basically just overridden with any of the functionality that the item has, you know, increasing stats, whatever. Um, finally, get item info. Uh, this basically just returns a string of whatever you want to describe the item about. So you could return a description text or, you know, stats that it alters or whatever, you know. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I'll just go over the other uh, the sort of derivative items. So first off, we've got food one, which has floats for right, how the values and if it alters them. So if it's a zero, it doesn't alter them. But you can change it in the inspector. So I believe I, believe I set the food to increase health. Uh, yeah, so you'll see here that we increase the health by five and wellness and sanity by one when you eat bread. So basically, by doing it all in the inspector, you could have multiple types of food just by this one food class, and you know, just use that. And oh, I'm not added. Uh, talks about my user. I don't think. Uh, so yeah. Uh, 
uh, sorry. So my user is a human, which will be the current human currently using the item, or it'll be a NPC or the player. And my container is the container that the item is currently in, because you can only use items from your container. Uh, and that is these two are assigned when the uh, item is used, I believe. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, yeah. So if item does have use function, then we set the user and container. Uh, this is basically so. Well, this is in the container script, by the way. It's in the GUI bit. So on this, which I'll go over in a second. Basically, it makes sure that we're altering the stats of the right object, or right character, or whatever. Uh, yeah, so we add all the values here, and then we drop item from the container, we remove it from the item monitor list, and finally we destroy the game object because it's a consumable that can only be used once. And yeah, and we turn get item info here. And likewise, for the antidote item, it does a similar thing, but instead, uh, we just have a quick check to make sure the user and container are not null. And what we do is we get the human stat controller, and we basically say, have balls to say, do we want to remove poison or bleeding? In this case, I believe the answer that was set to do both. I'm sorry. Yeah, we were both remove both poison and bleeding. Uh, that's the script. And we basically just remove these effects and then destroy the item. Pretty simple. That uh, was another one. Uh, nope, because I'm going over the items in a minute. So, one. Uh, next up is weapon items. So we scratch that, we're not going to do the weapon items just now, we're going to do the container instead and the changes I've made to that. So first off, uh, we have a... Sorry, <laughs> you're here. <sighs> first off, we have a hide weapon uh, method, which is just new. Basically, it's functionally identical to the drop item from container. Except we're not wanting to create the item in the world, we're just wanting to remove it from the container and the item list and just sort of hide it. So this is used when a weapon is equipped. Uh, so the weapon is just passed into it. We also have an overload of drop item from container, which basically just takes the item and... Uh, sorry, it takes the item as a game object rather than just the index of it in the array. So that just basically does the same, it removes, it, from the container. it removes the object from the container and then creates it in the world. And we also have another method which is to do with the weapons. So it finds uh, ammo, basically find ammo in inventory, which I will get back to later. Uh, and next up, uh, a couple of changes to the GUI to reflect the new changes we've made to item. So first up, uh, instead of just saying the weight, we now use items in container dot get item info when we wanted to draw the information about the item, and that is made also down here for like all the four instances of get item info in the like uh, inventory screen because you know the like nearby items, NPCs items, and comparison ones and whatnot. So yeah, and also. Uh, where is it? Uh, we have two new. Uh, uh, well, we got uh, basically a check for if the item that is currently being looped through in the current frame being drawn, if it has a use function. So if it does have a use function, then we basically just draw a button to use the item and say to use the item. And then if the button is pressed, we get the item, we set it's my user, we set it's my container, and then we just call the use item method. And this is also copy and pasted, it's the other section. So this is when we're looking through a container or another player's inventory or, or an NPC's inventory, sorry. Uh, for that. So yeah, it's just uh, identical here. And yeah, that was it. Uh, okay, that's it for the container changes. Now onto the weapons for real this time. Okay, so we got a couple of changes to the weapon controller to allow for like using ammo and dropping weapons and shit. So I'm just gonna go over that. So first off, uh, one change we have is instantiate as a boolean, which is an argument passed into set weapon. 
Uh, this is basically just to differentiate whether we are creating an instance of a prefab of a weapon. So say if you needed to give an enemy a specific weapon, then you could do that via a line of code or whatever. whatever. Uh, but And you'd say, pass in this is uh, true, because you want to instantiate one. But if it, you're equipping an existing weapon in the world, then you pass in false. And that's just basically reflected here. So if instantiate is true, you just instantiate the object. Otherwise, you just get the object, set its position, and set it to be active. Uh, yeah, we also have a uh, check here. So if my weapon object is null, so if the player or human in question doesn't have a weapon in control, or weapon at the moment, then that'll be null, so it's all fine. Otherwise, if we do have a current weapon currently equipped, uh, we get the weapon item of the script. Uh, weapon item script of the my weapon object. You get the container that the player is, or the NPC or player or whatever has on it. And we set hide item to false because we're wanting it to appear in the uh, world again because we're dropping it. Uh, then we are adding it to the container. So we're using this uh, weapon item to hide item to container, which we had previously. Uh, it's just here. And then if weapon item is active enabled, I'll just get rid of this. This was previous yeah. implementation of it, which had a bug in it. So don't worry about that. So if the weapon is item enabled after calling this, so that would say that we haven't, uh, it hasn't successfully been added to the container. So they probably didn't have the weight capacity. Then we basically just create the item in the world. And finally, we set my weapon to null and my weapon object to null to say that we finally got rid of the existing weapon. Then we call this if statement to see whether we should instantiate the, a new instance of the weapon or just use the existing one. And finally, we're onto the normal stuff, except for this one bit. Uh, the new line is my weapon dot hide item is true. So for the new weapon that you've currently got equipped, uh, we just want to hide it so it doesn't get picked up by the item monitor here because that would be bad, and we don't want to be able to clone the, uh, clone weapons. Okay, I'm just finding the wrong script. Uh, okay, so next up, we're on a weapon item. Uh, basically, a couple of new variables here. Uh, got weapon type, which basically is a string, just identifies the type of weapon, and we use this when we are searching for ammunition. So as you'll see, there's an ammo item script here, which has, uh, I'll just show you the ammo, uh, ammo, there we go. Uh, you'll see that it's got an ammo item instance here, and it has a weapon ammo, it is ammo for rifle. And we'll also see on the test weapon that it is also a weapon type of rifle. So these two match, so the ammo can be used as well, uh, ammo for the gun. And that's how that works. So yeah, so that's, and then, on container uh, to like find ammo for the gun. I think I botched the explanation of this, but whatever. Uh, yeah, so find ammo in inventory. We basically just pass in the string of the type. We go through the all the items in the container, and we try and find uh, if uh, we try and get uh, an ammo item instance off the uh, container uh, of the item. Sorry, if we can find one on the uh, Sorry, if we can find an instance of ammo item on the item, then we check if the weapon is ammo for on the ammo item is equal to the string we passed in, then we return the index of the item. Uh, but otherwise, we just keep going through the array, incrementing the counter, because, yeah, because we have to do it like this. And if we get to the end of the inventory and we can't find any ammo uh, for the weapon, we would just return minus one to signal that that is a, uh, we don't have any ammo. And that is this, that code is then used here. Uh, so if ammo in mag is more than zero, we just uh, do the normal whole thing of bullet, uh, creating bullets at a particular rate of fire, but now we decrease the ammo in the mag. And otherwise, so if ammo has reached zero, we get the container. 
uh, we get int i is will basically just store the value of find ammo in inventory. So this will even return an index to the first available magazine for the weapon. Or if it returns minus one, then it will say we've not got ammo for it. So if the index is not equal to minus one, uh, we're going through, we get the item from the container. We then drop the item from the container. Uh, we remove it from the item monitor list. We then destroy the object and we set the ammo in the magazine for the weapon value to be the ammo capacity of the weapon. And we just debug that log reload to show it works. So that is how the new weapon ammunition stuff works. Uh, is there anything else? Uh, yes, uh, the use item. So like I said, uh, we can use it to basically use clicking use item on a weapon equips it. So my user dot game objects dot uh, this basically just gets a weapon controller off this object and sets the weapon to be this current instance of a weapon. Uh, so in this case, it's false because uh, this will already be an instance of a weapon in the game. So we don't need to instantiate another copy of it. And finally, we call the my container dot hide weapon this dot game object. So we're saying we want to sort of remove it from the container and hide it from the world, but we still technically have the weapon because uh, we're carrying it in our hands instead of the inventory. So yeah, that's all good. Uh, I think that was it actually for the rest of the episode. Uh, was there anything else? Ammo, weapons, ammo. Yeah, I've done that. Done that. Done that. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So yeah, uh, that was that. Uh, so it's a quick update on what I've been doing. Uh, Loud or Quiet is pretty much good to go now. I've got the final approval from Steam. I've just got to send out keys to reviewers. So if you have any suggestions for reviewers and shit, uh, please leave a link in the comments. I will just give you a quick demo again. Uh, likewise, there'll be a link to Loud or Quiet in the description. So if you fancy making me happy, should buy a copy on the 20th of November. And that'll be all good. Uh, I'd really appreciate it, actually. Because uh, I want a job that involves making games for me. Uh, so, yeah. So, you see that we have items, we can add the inventory, we can use them to equip different weapons, and we now have ammunition. You see that we now have no more ammo. Because it's going through it. Uh, we now have no ammo. This one has nine bullets. Now it has none. I'm seeing that the number's changing, so we are actually switching weapons. Uh, so, yeah. So, just for watching, uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that generic YouTube shit. Uh, check out my shit on itch.io and Steam and whatnot. And, yeah. Just for watching. Bye.